Hi, this is Pastor Josh from First Baptist to Queen. You know, on Easter week, leading up to when Jesus was crucified, on the Thursday of Easter week, Jesus did a whole lot. He sent some of his disciples to go get the Passover meal ready as they were going to observe that that evening. And so those guys got that meal ready, and then Jesus came with the rest of his disciples, and they had the Passover meal. But in the Passover meal, Jesus changed uh, the way it was uh, to be symbolized. And uh, he said that, that the, the food of the meal, the bread of the meal, was going to represent his body that was to be broken, his body that was to be offered in sacrifice uh, for the forgiveness of sins. And then uh, Jesus took uh, the drink and said, this is going to represent uh, my blood that will be spilled, sealing the covenant, guaranteeing eternal life. And so Jesus did all of this during the meal. Uh, that they participated in that night. And we call that now the Lord's Supper or, or communion. And we take that even today in, in commemoration of that, in remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice, in remembrance of, uh, of what he did to solidify and cement the covenant that we have now, guaranteeing eternal life because of his death and resurrection. And so they, they had that meal, and then the Scripture says they sang a song, uh, and then they went out into a garden. And out in the garden, uh, Jesus left a, a group of the disciples uh, uh, in, a, in a one particular area and went off to another section with three more of the guys and left them there. And he told them, you guys, you need to watch and you need to pray. And then Jesus let, went a little bit away from them and he prayed. And then he came back and those guys were asleep. I mean, it was the middle, it was late at night. And so they were asleep and he woke them up and he says, guys, you need to watch and pray. And then he went back and he prayed. And when he returned to those three disciples, they were still asleep and he woke them up again. And as he was waking them up and gathering together with the other disciples he had left over in a space, a 12th disciple came to their group. This was Judas. And he came with a mob, guys with stuff like torches and swords they approached Jesus. Uh, uh, Judas came up to Jesus, gave him a kiss, and uh, then Jesus was going to be arrested there. But his disciples weren't going to go quietly, at least in that moment. Peter pulls out a sword, swings it at one of the guys in the mob's head, and whacks his ear off. Well, Jesus calms the situation down. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, emotions were high. Jesus calms the situation down, heals the guy's ear, and tells Peter, kind of rebukes Peter, and says, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. This is not the way you are supposed to be as a follower of mine. And Jesus goes with those guys as he is arrested. And what, what I find in that moment find a lot of things, but particularly is Jesus's concern for the very guys who are arresting him. The guys arresting Jesus late at night on Thursday evening, uh, he has concern for them. He heals the ear of one of the guys who's wrongfully arresting him. Now, if it were me, you know, I, I, I would not have that kind of compassion, that level of compassion, but Jesus did because Jesus cares for everyone even those who wrong him greatly. And so that should be a great comfort to us that Jesus cares for us even in our mistakes, even in the decisions we make. But it also sets the example for how we should treat others. That even those who do not treat us the best, even those who do things to us wrongly, even if the information they have is not truthful, we should, like Jesus, still offer forgiveness and compassion and grace and mercy. So that's the challenge then today on Thursday of Easter week is to in thanksgiving, in praise, be grateful. Thank Jesus for, for the compassion he had for you. The com I thank you for the compassion he had for me, the love he had for me. But also then demonstrate that to those you come in contact, to those around you. Maybe even now God's placed some names or some faces in your head of those that you need to offer compassion to, that you need to offer forgiveness to in the depths of your heart. And tomorrow we're going to take a look at what Friday looked like for Jesus on Easter week. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll catch you in the next one.